Mr. Ethan, what's going on, brother? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. Hey, sorry for a little delay with the software. Finally is up, and I'm able to take both your swings. And actually, this swing over here on the left, if you remember, is your first swing that we started with when we first started our lessons. So what I like to do usually on this last one is I like to go down memory lane and compare and contrast how far we've come. Because it's always... It's always easy to just look at what we just what we did last time last month and judge that but after we've had about six sessions this is session number six it's nice to look back and see what it was that that where we kind of started right so there was a lot of stuff as you remember in the video that first video and you guys can go back to that but there was a lot of stuff that you were doing uh, really well you had a good foundation to start from and and that is that it's always a good thing for for yourself to just know that you've been putting in some good work before we met and then that good for me so that we still have some room to move and improve right so over here we were working on a lot of different things one was a float if you remember you were just picking your foot up and falling forward and as you can see over here you see that you pick the foot up you kind of pause for a second before going forward so that was the float and you knock that out of the park one other thing we were talking about was finger pressure. Now that was something that I just kind of put out there. I know that's usually new to most of my hitters and it's not something we can really see from the video. Um, but that was something that <clears throat> something that we worked on too. Looks like you're a lot more solid getting through impact now with that. Uh, we did work on uh, getting you a little bit more stride. Um, Babe Ruth, remember working on the Babe Ruth drill. And as you can see over here, being one of the swings, it was you had a, you had some forward momentum going. We just needed to work in the float, and then I think we just had to get you moving again forward. So I mean, it looks really good, really good controlled fall. You got good distance between your feet here. Over here, it just seemed like you were a little short with uh, the distance between your feet like to have a little bit more that helps you to get under the ball more consistently and you can see i know the videos it's a little different because this is a closer up video than this one um, but it sure looks like you got quite a bit uh, less space between your feet than you do over here right so that was a babe root drill another thing was our head at at landing uh trying to stabilize the head and not not move the head around quite so much okay not not the head moving forward per se from the the weight shift but more of the head you know chin to chest or eyes going to the ceiling or rolling the head we want to minimize that kind of head movement and you can see that there's you know, eyes kind of go up and then down so just trying to minimize that i think we're doing a lot better with that uh there a lot better in that swing. Uh, I know dad had said in the email that you were coach was thrown from 30 feet away from a standing position. So you're almost like you're hitting up a mountain. So that, that we have to take that into account as well. Cause it's not, you're not going to be seeing a ball that, that, um, steep coming down to you in a game when you have your peers thrown to you, right? You're, you get a, an adult coach thrown from 30 feet away, unless he's a midget, uh, that doesn't, uh, <laughs> that's going to be a, a steep uphill climb for your barrel. Um, so definitely understandable. What else? I, I keep a log on all my hitters and this is the, this is the log. So I, I log what our drills were that we worked on. I, I log what the pat and the pop, right? What you're doing well, what we're working on. And, uh, so we mentioned, fl oh, flashlight. Yeah. The flashlight. Look at this. So we got the flashlight at landing. You really like this drill. I remember we see that flashlight, the barrels getting flat and we got over here. So landing barrel, much better position, beautiful position. The other thing we talked about was the catcher's glove, hitting the catcher's glove. So you're kind of releasing that barrel a little too early. It's getting behind you a little too early, ca causing some drag, a little early drag that would that would not allow us to hit the ball on the numbers or on the sweet spot as often. Um, over here, uh, much better, dude, much tighter swing arc. You could tell this one, this pitch, I would say was somewhere either inside or over the middle of the plate because you're hitting by the by the path of your barrel. It looks like, and it's nice and flat. I love it. It's You're kind of knocking off that catcher's glove that's in line with your back foot. Remember the catcher's glove drills, right? You had a catcher's glove here. You got the real catcher's glove, and then you got the belly button catcher's glove. And belly button catcher's glove was on the inner third, the back foot ones on the middle third, and then the back back ones on the outer third. So, so much better there on that pitch uh, on these on these swings. And that's not just this one, but if we just kind of take 
take just another random one from this group, you can see much tighter swing arc, much, much better. What else besides we get to, uh, before we get to what we had been working on, let's see, this is my hitters thing here. Okay, so right here, we got catcher's glove there. Oh, wall turns, wall turns. So we were working on wall turns because I think when we started doing the Babe Ruth, and, and I'm, I won't bring that swing up here, we'll just keep it on this one. When we started doing the Babe Ruth drill, you started to kind of leak or lunge forward and, and you weren't getting to a good position. This one looks better, but we didn't have a float. and We didn't have a, uh, enough space between our feet, so we had to get some, some more stride length. And so as we were building that, we had some other things kind of crop up, which is pretty normal. And uh, much better here with our line of our body as we're getting to impact a um, little slightly out in front there using your front knee to kind of buy yourself some time which is which is fine on this swing um, but you're much better with being in a better more stacked position with your body with uh, from those wall turns all right and then recently we've been working on showing numbers downhill shoulder angle right so you remember this was what up until about two months ago this is what you look like so at landing or pretty close to landing we're right here we had the up shoulders right so these up shoulders that's a collapsing backside and we definitely don't want that when we're at landing and so now and last time much better here more level if not you're starting to get positive or you're starting to get uh, negative right if this is positive right you're going up we want to be more negative we want to be in a downhill shoulder not an uphill right so more negative so we're starting to get into the negative zones i think we're still a little bit more um flat with the shoulders but dude we have come so far this is this is not a very good position at landing to be in we want to be down so that then we can flip into this position which is a powerful position but it has to be done in a proper sequence right so it can't be started from there once our front foot hits the ground it can't we can't start from this position we got to start from this this position over here in order to get to this position to get to the ball right so that back shoulder does drop we want it to drop depending on the pitch height uh, it drops less the higher the pitch is up in the zone and it drops more the lower the pitch is in the zone, right? So that back shoulder can drop, that's okay, but we don't want it to drop too soon. That is the key. So much better over here, much better. I think we can leave this for, at least for now, the shoulders. I do wanna work more on showing your numbers and you're, it actually looks like you're, you're doing good with this front arm. Uh, you're doing good over here too on taking slack out of the system. Um, but I want to try two things. Uh, one, actually, would probably kill both both birds with one stone. Is the take slack out of the swing drill. So you got the front arm position right, but we have to take our hands back in a different direction. So you're you're basically it looks like here you're taking your hands back towards the catcher. Okay, I want you to actually take your hands back behind your back heel. So it's if you're standing in a room, if you're standing in your bathroom, say, okay, and you're facing the mirror. The mirror right here is uh, your chest is, you can see your chest, okay? You got the mirror in front of you right here in front of your face. And if you get up to get ready to swing, we wanna take our hands back to the corner behind us of the bathroom, uh, the actual room, okay? The corner this way. So it's at, an, it's at an angle back this way. It's not towards the catcher and it's not directly behind you either. Some of my hitters think that they gotta take their hands back directly behind them, which, which ends, ends up taking them off the ball more. And we, and we don't wanna do that. It's more at an angle. It's in between those two points, not back towards the catcher, not directly behind you, but in the middle of those points. And dad can, can help you out with that. And, and we're gonna hop on a phone call. I, I extended a phone call out to dad since this, this video took too much of a delay to get to you so we can talk about that then but we want to go back in an angle what we see hitters doing the best hitters will end up with their hands behind their back heel or just over their back heel depending on how tall they are and, and um, you know arm arm length and stuff like that so it depends on the hitter but we do see them either over the back heel or just beyond it okay so that's where we're gonna take it and what that does two two birds it's killing with one stone is it gets us to take slack out of the system, which you're pretty much already doing. We just gotta uh, angle you a little bit better. But it also helps with showing numbers, okay? So that's the thing. I don't think from this view, we're really showing numbers that much. And I think we can do more. You're probably doing this. You're, you're probably showing numbers very well off the tee and soft toss, possibly. But when it comes to live, it's tough. And, and again, these, 
these habits die hard sometimes and you just got to keep practicing it you just got to keep practicing it the more you practice it the the better you get with it and eventually you're going to be showing your numbers trust me most of my hitters do we just keep on it keep on it keep on it don't take it don't take my advice is oh man i've been working on this and it hasn't been coming around no it probably is coming around it's probably coming around off the tee and soft toss it's just not coming around on live just yet but when it does i'm telling you you're going to see a huge change i mean you should see a huge change already in in all these in in your swings and this ball's popping off your bat this one kind of popped up a little bit um, and and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put in your I'll put in your your marching orders. We can work on vertical. So along with the um, so this one you did a little bit better. You have a pretty good flat swing anyway. But our whole goal when we're hitting is uh, what I tell my hitters. We say we work on controlling our verticals or our launch angles. I say verticals because a lot of people don't like launch angles now. It's kind of becoming a bad connotation because they think it's oh we want to just pop it up and that's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is we're trying to see this ball's coming in at a certain angle, right? You see that angle that ball's coming in. See if I can trace that angle. So I think it's coming in like this. Let's see if that if I did a good job there. Ah, not too bad. Not perfect, but uh, just about right. Okay. So you have this line. This ball's coming in. So what our goal should be is that ball, whatever that height is, which you actually did a good job here. So that height at impact to the ground, right? If we take, if we take um, and measure, let's see if we can measure this to the ground, right? So whatever that measurement is there, we want to off the barrel, it needs to stay that same height off your bat. You see that? So if we pull this out, so the height off the ground, that ball should come off your bat the same height. Okay, that's our, that's our goal all the time. So if the ball's down here, if the ball's here at your ankle, when we hit that ball, that ball should go like this, okay? Same thing should be said if the ball's up, say at your really high, up at your letters, that ball should come off your bat like that, okay? So that's controlling verticals. That's that's what we that's the next stage of what we're going to be really working on is making sure that that ball's coming off your bat the same height. What that does is that keeps your barrel on the plane of the pitch. Okay, you see the plane of the pitch is this diagonal line coming down here. Uh, we wanna keep that barrel on the plane, which I think you did very well right here. Kept the barrel on plane. And that keeps us out of the air, non-productive fly balls, and it keeps us off the ground, non-productive ground balls, okay? Goal is to hit it hard on a line, always, okay? So you got the, we have the taking slack out of the system and showing numbers, working those. Those are great complementary drills to do together because they work on the same thing. Okay. So if you got any questions on that, let me know. But I'll uh, let me let's pull up a hitter real quick and just kind of show you what I'm talking about. All right, Mr. Ethan, over here on the left is Andrew McCutcheon, and I just pulled this video this year. Or no, it hasn't been last year because he was with the Giants this year. I think it was the end of last year. Uh, he hasn't been doing as good as of late might be aging out or I don't know what's going on with him, but uh, he's got one of the prototypical catapult loading system swings. He's had some really good years. He's a small guy, 5'10", 180 pounds or so. Um, hits the ball a mile, especially when it comes to the opposite field. I mean, he's hitting balls 400 plus feet oppo, which for his size is pretty impressive. Um, so what you're gonna see, the difference between him and you Okay, so, um, and I can show you the pitcher's view. You'll see his hands are actually behind him over that back heel like we talked about. Uh, but you can see both of your, your positions, right? So you can see his down, you can see his elbow, you see this yellow on his forearm, the sleeve that he's got. You can see where it ends and the black starts. That, that's where his elbow's at up here. You can see it's higher than his, than his front shoulder and his foot's on the ground, okay? Even from this view, you can see, it might be not perfect, your view, uh, the same view, but you can see this front shoulder being pulled down and in, and yours is kind of hanging out here. We can see your sleeve right here is still over over your kind of hip, maybe in a little bit, but definitely not pulled in like you see with McCutcheon here, right? So you can see he starts, he kind of goes here. You can see how that elbow gets up like you. So you got the elbow up here too. 
but he keeps his up, keeps it nice and tight. You can see the arms, you can see the direction the arms are traveling. They're going behind him, not behind behind, but in that corner we talked about in the bathroom, bathroom corner or, or room corner, right? Um, you see that front shoulder pulling in and down and you're seeing all that happen to landing. Okay, he's keeping that balloon nice and twisted up all the way to landing. Let me show you what this looks like from the front view. Let's see here. Okay, so you see, watch him as he comes. You'll see his numbers. I think he's 27. You'll see as he goes, you can see where those hands are going back here. They're going behind his back heel. And Oh, 22. 22, I think. So you're seeing the 22 nice and clear all the way to toe touch. You see it numbers 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 all the way to toe touch this is where your power is coming from and i'm telling you mr ethan when you get this live <laughs> oh my gosh i feel bad for the pitchers because they're going to be just turning it's almost like they'd be better off stepping off the mound and throwing the ball in the gap uh so this is this is a big one so taking slack out of the system showing numbers i think that's that's going to be your big one uh, and I just wanted to say I'm, I'm so proud of you. We saw your video from back in I think it was March. You've come so far. We've worked on so many things. You've not you've knocked most of those pins down. I'm talking about bowling analogy, right? You've knocked most of those pins down. We're working on these, and this is a tough one for a lot of my hitters your age. This is a challenge, but uh, you put in your time. Keep. Put in the time because that's the big thing. And that's probably what I'm most proud of is that you're putting in that time. You're four to five days a week. You're 15, 10 to 15 minutes each day. Very proud of that because if you're doing the right things and you're doing it frequently throughout the week, you just you have nothing to do but succeed, right? So very proud of you. I'm looking forward to continue to work with you on your swing. And man, I'm just looking forward to the next swing, bud. Keep up the good work.